Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. Gonna make a quick video here. This is one of our classroom rigs that we use for rental and for teaching with. Uh, it's came that time again for us to do a complete overhaul on this. Um, typically speaking, you're gonna clean your regulators at least once a year. Um, and of course, you're gonna do a complete overhaul or complete servicing either yearly or uh, biannually every two years, depending on the manufacturer and the um, what they recommend on it. Uh, we actually clean these regs about every six months simply because we use them so much teaching classes and uh, for all the other types of diving and stuff we do. However, it has come time for me to do a complete overhaul on this reg. So I'm going to make a quick video on the disassembly and reassembly. I'm not really going to go over uh, what we do during the overhaul or anything like that. I'm just going to show you uh, some of the internal components of the first stage. Uh, it's it's very important to note that w when you service your regs, please take it to a certified technician to get it done. If you are a certified technician, please make sure you use the proper tools. Uh, we've said it time and time again, this equipment is life-saving equipment. Uh, it keeps you alive in an environment you were never meant to be in. So with that being said, you want to make sure that you use the proper techniques um, and use the proper tools to take good care of it. What I have here is just a standard Mares Rover 2 uh, as piston regulator. This is an unbalanced regulator. Um, it, this is probably one of the best overall workhorse regs as far as uh, using it for rental and stuff like that because uh, they, they last forever. They're very easy to service. But what I'm going to show you real quick is just the disassembly and the reassemble of it. On this particular one, I have a plastic cap that goes over the tail cap here and I'm just going to use this little plastic wedge uh, to get in behind it and then I should be able to pry it right off. Okay, Once I have that off just simply set it aside and of course I just clean this out with a little bit of warm soapy water. And before I go any further I'm going to bring my third hand in. Anytime that you're working with a first stage it makes it a lot easier if you have what we call a third hand. I'm going to simply screw it into a low pressure port. It's going to give me leverage um, and torque whenever I'm loosening or tightening something. And it makes things a lot easier. I can actually leave it on the table if I'm trying to uh, wrench something on or off and, and let that be my leverage uh, instead of sitting here trying to do it with my hand. Um, I can tear up, um, I can basically hurt myself trying to do it if I don't have this good leverage point. Now, to take off this tail cap here, I'm going to use just um, this spanner wrench. And once again, it, it's important to remember, always use the proper tools. We are a Mares dealer here, so we have the tools directly from Mares. Uh, depending on what your manufacturer are, there are several companies out there. There's global manufacturing. Uh, of course, Trident's got some um, tools that you can use. Scuba Toys has got some that you can purchase from them. Just please make sure that you are properly trained to do this and that you are using the proper tools. All right, so to loosen this up, as with most things, uh, it's going to be lefty loosey, righty tighty. So to loosen, I'm going to turn the tail cap to the left, and to do that, I'm going to use a spanner wrench. Once again, using the table as my leverage point, I'm just going to simply press down until I feel it break free, and I'm going to give it about two or three good turns. Um, it, I don't want to take this guy all the way off uh, using the wrench, and here's why. In behind this tail cap is my piston, and there's a spring and a couple of washers. And if I just take this guy off without watching it, that tail cap's going to be um, shot off by the spring. I may lose my spring washers or anything like that. So as I go to take it off, I want to make sure that I keep tension on it with my finger so that I don't lose any of the internal components. Okay. And once I get it to where... I can turn it by hand. Like I said, I'm going to keep tension on this tail cap itself until I feel it break free from the threads, and there it just broke free. All right, I'm going to turn my regulator standing upright. That way all the components will uh, pour down here into the tail cap. I'm going to set the first stage aside temporarily. I'm going to do a quick inspection of the parts. Now, like I said, I am going to do an overhaul of this after I reassemble it for you guys. Of course, I'll tear it back apart. But I just want to show you real quick. I've got a washer. I've got a spring that goes over the top of the piston. I've got the piston itself. And then this particular one has another washer on top. And that's basically the tail cap piece itself. Now, to go to the yoke side of the first stage, I'm going to remove my yoke screw and dust cap. 
go ahead and set it aside. All right, and for all intents and purposes of the video, I already removed all the hoses, of course, and the extra port plug, um, so I don't have to worry about it. Make sure I use the proper size wrench for this next part. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to remove this yoke nut assembly. Once again, I'm going to use the table as leverage. Lefty loosey righty tighty. So I need to turn the yoke nut to the left. And I have seen guys in the past try to do this with an adjustable wrench. Um, it, if you're very careful, you could probably do that. I, I would strongly encourage you to use uh, the proper size open end wrench for this um, and of course if you're a technician you, you're going to have access to stuff like that and the specs but if if you are working on your own regs i can't stress enough guys please make sure you use the proper tools to do it with so as i remove the uh, yoke nut assembly here i should have a completely disassembled first stage as far as the housing uh, unit itself i'm gonna go ahead and set it aside I'm going to remove my yoke and then I have this component here and I have several internal components in here that we're going to remove real quick. There is a spring, a filter, and a little clamp. Now the most important feature here of course is the clamp which holds everything in. As I go to remove it, I don't want that spring shooting components out. So all I'm going to do to remove this is I'm going to simply keep my finger over the top so that as I remove the clamp itself, I don't have parts going every which way and lose them off my workbench or anything like that. So I'm going to remove the clamp, set it aside, and then I can simply pour out my filter uh, and my spring itself also. Now, like I said, I do have to do a complete overhaul on this regulator, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the reassembly of it. And then, of course, after the video, I'll, I'll go back and clean it and, and rebuild it as needed. Um, but just to show you real quick just how, how easy it is to reassemble one of these, I'm going to take the spring, place it back into the yoke nut assembly here. Make sure it gets seated down in there good. Go ahead and replace my filter. Like I said, there's going to be a little bit of spring tension there. I want to be careful that I don't lose components. I'm going to take my little clamp, place it down in there until I hear it click. All right. So that's pretty much reassembled there. <clears throat> Come back to my yoke in the first stage, and I'm going to reassemble the yoke nut in there okay now <clears throat> like I said I do have to tear this guy back apart uh, to do an overhaul when I do put this guy back together uh, for the last time I'm gonna use a blue Loctite uh, thread lock in there just to help keep it secured so I'm going to tighten this guy down real good. Once again, using the table as leverage. Okay. Then come back to the piston side of the regulator itself. I'm going to start with my tail cap. Place my piston in it. All right. Replace one of my plastic washers. And then, of course, the spring. And then, of course, put the washer on top. Now, when I go to set the intermediate pressure on this guy, I can remove uh, or add washers as need be. Uh, on this particular rig, if I ever need more than two of these, then that's a telltale sign I'm going to have to replace this spring. Um, so that's just something I can check the intermediate pressure once I get uh, things put together. Once again, that kind of goes along with being properly trained uh, to service these regulators because you may add or take away parts that you actually need or don't need if you don't know the, the proper techniques and have the proper tools and equipment to do it. Now to place the tail cap back on, this spring here is going to give me a little bit of tension. So to start with, I'm just going to set it down over the top of the spring like so, keep things lined up. Keeping my hand on top of the tail cap, I'm going to simply invert the unit. And then what I can do is push down with that spring tension and I'm just going to simply turn the tail cap until I feel the threads catch. I want to be careful not to uh, cross thread the tail cap onto the first stage. And then once I feel it catch, then I can simply take it, turn it in my hand. I'm going to get it first as tight as I can with my hand. <clears throat> then I'll bring the spinner wrench back into play. 
and continue to tighten it on down. Okay. Once again, I'm going to use the table as leverage here. Make sure it's good and secure. I'm going to go ahead and replace my yoke screw and dust cap. Get it in there good and secure. And then the last thing, of course, is replacing a little plastic cover of the tail cap. And to do that, I'll just stand it up, push down. So it snaps back into place like so. It should turn freely on there. It's just a little groove that it locks in. I can remove my third hand. And then, of course, replace port plugs, hoses, uh, transmitters, whatever I had originally plugged in. I usually leave that to the last thing to do to make sure I get the hoses routed properly into the correct ports. So, guys, as, as I said before, it's very important, and I, I can't stress this enough. Please make sure you go to a certified technician to get your regulator service. Uh, it's very important once a year to get a good cleaning of the regulator. Um, anywhere from a year to 100, 100 dives on it, you want to get it good and cleaned. Uh, every two years or 200 dives, depending on how much you dive, you want to make sure you get a complete overhaul done, get that regulator rebuilt, keep it in good working order. Guys, as much as we spend on some of this equipment, if you take good care of it, it will outlast you. Uh, I've been diving for over 20 years. I still have my original set of scuba gear that my father purchased um, in the mid to late 80s for me, and it still works to this day. Now, I've grown quite a bit. It doesn't quite fit, but I wouldn't have a problem putting my four-year-old daughter in it and letting her dive it. Um, of course, if she was trained, of course, but just to show you how long scuba gear will last if you take good care of it, um, it, it will last you a lifetime. So guys, as always, we appreciate you watching our videos. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, you like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.